Anjong Haseyo, everybody. My name is David Glau, head of the Amsterdam Bicycle Program. I've been asked to give a presentation about the Amsterdam cycling culture and the use of the bike as the major mode of transportation in our city, in keeping the city mobile, healthy and livable. The reasons are, as I was told, there are some striking similarities between the two cities of Amsterdam and Seoul, and good reasons for striving to have the bike play a similar role in Seoul. One of those striking similarities is we both are compact cities with growing populations and the growing need for smaller, more efficient, sustainable and healthy ways to get around the city. So let's start with a brief look at the current state of bicycling in Amsterdam, after which I will focus on how we became a bicycle city, how we keep it that way, and I will share some of the lessons we learned throughout the years. Well, to start off, Amsterdam has around 875,000 people living in. We have more than 900,000 bikes in the city, so that's more than one bike per person. Um, Amsterdam is about 220 km square kilometers uh, big, uh, which is three times as small as Seoul. Uh, on the main bicycling road uh, route, uh, we have about 30,000 bicyclists uh, passing every day, but just one route. Um, and the total amount of designated uh, cycle network and designated cycle paths is more than 800 kilometers long. So this all amounts to over 665,000 trips per day. Um, and the people in Amsterdam cycle approximately 2 million kilometers per day. Um, and well, just to show you some more figures, which you can later look back at. Well, uh, bicycling bicycling is the most used mode of transportation in Amsterdam within the central areas comprising of more than 50% of trips, excluding walking. I've been told that one of the similarities between Seoul and Amsterdam is that most of the cycling is done in the central areas of the city. So to even further the use of bicycle, uh, we've got a special programs. We've got special programs to stimulate the use of bikes in the outskirts of Amsterdam. Um, what it all ends up to is that people of all ages in Amsterdam, uh, just as in the rest of the country, are commuting to work and education uh, in all weather conditions every day. And um, we always end up second in the world renowned Copenhagen Ice Index, which is not that strange uh, when you know that Copenhagen always comes in first. So how did we become a bike city and how are we keeping it that way? Well, first of all, uh, we weren't always a true bicycle city, uh, but at the same time, it also Amsterdam also never really was not a cycling city. In the 1950s and 1960s, Amsterdam, like everywhere in the world, was well on its way to become a car city. Urban planners did foresee, as you can see uh, in the pictures that are showing now, did foresee a big restructuring of the city's layout uh, to, to make them completely compatible with uh, car infrastructure uh, and actually foresaw the end of the bicycle. But uh, despite all of this, still a vast number of people kept cycling in Amsterdam. So. What this all ended up to was that inevitably this led to a sharp rise in car bicycle accidents in the city and throughout the countries. In 1972 alone in the Netherlands, three and a half thousand people died, of which almost 500 younger than 15 years old in car accidents, a big part of them who were biking. And a lot of them uh, were killed and injured in Amsterdam as the biggest city of the country. In that same year, in 1972, a group of people uh, formed uh, an organization called Stop the Kindermord, Stop Killing Children. Um, some of the organizers were parents actually of youngsters that had died uh, by, uh, by cars. Um, this became a very popular organization that eventually turned out into uh, the Dutch Bicyclist Union, um, uh, which is still a very big organization up until this day. What they did was organizing a lot of rallies, demonstrations, actions, um, a lot of them focused in Amsterdam, combined with the ongoing resistance against the restructuring of inner cities uh, and the demolishing of, uh, of the older city centers um, and a changing political wind at the same time, all led to the rethinking of the role of cars and the bicycle in the city. Well, first and foremost, this led to the 
thinking and the implementation of actual preferred bicycle infrastructure networks. The first one of those in Amsterdam was thought out in 1976. It comprised of no more than three routes throughout the city, but it already foresaw a dense network throughout the city. So what it all ended up to was to uh, the current state of our bicycle network, which is showing here. Um, the second thing that happened was that we invested in actually providing this network with safe bicycle paths and later uh, and designated bicycle paths and later uh, combining them with lower car speeds in residential areas. So also without a designated bike path, biking is safe over there. So at this moment, there is practically no street in Amsterdam that you cannot bike on. Then from the 90s on, we witnessed a second wave in the rise of bicycle use. And this happened mainly because the city was becoming more crowded, like most cities are, and still was and is facilitating cars as well. So as the city got jammed with the cars, and more and more people started using the bike as the quickest and most flexible way to move around the city. Well, having said that, how do we keep Amsterdam a bicycle city? First of all, there's a continuing and even increasing effort to further reduce the number of cars with a special low car agenda, providing in higher prices for paid parking throughout the city, cutting routes to make less shortcuts through the city, pushing cars through the city's highway to its, uh, to its boundaries, decreasing the number of car parking um, spaces by 10,000 in the next coming five years, um, and implementing policies to encourage the use of other modes of transportation, specifically healthy, cleaner and smaller modes of transportation. So what we always also do is that we keep investing in bicycle um, uh, with dedicated five year programs, even though we are already a bicycle city. Um, and not only do we do that, but because we are already a bicycle city, most of the money is spent on regular maintenance on new projects, on new roads, which will never occur without them also having a bicycle path. So that's what you see over here, uh, um, is that in the period between 2017 and 2022, we will invest roughly around 350 million euros in bicycling in the city, most of which the 300 million is done for maintenance and uh, the, the ded dedicated bicycle program will invest another 54 million euros on top of that. We we'll take a quick glance at uh, the bicycle program, the current bicycle program. Um, uh, as you can see, it's built around three pillars. It's uh, the, the pillar of smooth cycling, it's the easy parking and uh, better biking or new biking. Well, first of all, smooth cycling. Smooth cycling is all about infrastructure. It's about more connections. It's about faster connections. Uh, it's about smoother connections, including bicycle boulevards and wider connections. Um, and safer, making them safer even, uh, and expanding the network to the wider region of Amsterdam. So to make the bike even more uh, interesting also for people commuting from work to the to the towns uh, surrounding the city of Amsterdam. Then we've got the bike parking pillar of our program. Um, uh, to and, and this is a very, very uh, important one because uh, we need to facilitate uh, parking especially in the dense compact city that Amsterdam is, because we saw a lot of problems with too many uh, uh, bikes parked everywhere around the city on, on the streets. Um, and as I've been told, this is also something um, that, that reminds of Seoul as a very, very dense compact city. So keep this in mind, uh, making sure you've got good parking facilities is of the utmost importance. Um, we, uh, for this in this five year period, the program is running, we will add another 100,000 parking spaces to the uh, parking spaces that are already there, which are more than 350,000. Um, uh, we built solutions for hotspots where a lot of uh, the places where, where a lot of uh, bikes are parked. Um, we are facilitating behavior, but we are also enforcing good parking behavior. One of the things we do is we tow away uh, wrongly uh, parked bikes. Um, we tow away around 100,000 bikes a year in this way. You can collect your bike, but you will have to pay some money and you have to go to the outskirts of Amsterdam to pick up your bike after it's been towed away. So to focus a little bit more on uh, why biking is so important, 
this is um, a, a small uh, map of the city center um, in which um, uh, 250,000 bicycle parking spaces uh, were available uh, in 2015, while 350,000 bicycle spaces uh, were needed, actually. So, uh, and we saw that even more uh, bikes at that point, around 151,000 were not parked in bike racks or in designated uh, um, bike parking places. So, to end it, uh, to end the program, uh, not the end the program, but uh, the, the last pillar of the program is the new biking, uh, which is all about innovation and behavior. And this is also very much meant to tackle the challenges the huge number of bicyclists also pose, uh, because some of the bicyclists in Amsterdam behave like they're king of the road. And this also happens when, uh, when you are in a big group, uh, which more and more is, is the case when you're bicycling. Um, and combined with the vast numbers of bikes, um, they also become a source of unsafe, unsafe traffic itself. Um, but also uh, this program or the new biking is about uh, behavior campaigns, about uh, pilots, uh, innovation, involving citizens in innovation and data, data gathering uh, and promoting cycling in the city parts with lower uh, bike use, which I told you before. Uh, but also, for instance, um, um, part of this was um, dealing with uh, uh, the first big bike sharing initiatives in 2017, uh, which were eventually actually forbidden in Amsterdam because everybody already had a bike and we had uh, such a big inflow of uh, bike sharing bikes um, that they became a big problem for, uh, for, the, public, uh, for the public space. Um, and we already had that bar parking problem with bikes, blocking the sidewalk squares and even canals. So we ended up um, uh, uh, getting rid of all the bikes and now are slowly restarting with uh, uh, three or four uh, uh, bike sharing systems throughout the system um, on a small scale and uh, initiatives to see if they can further the use of bikes and facilitate low car policies. Well. That's a very, very uh, quick uh, look at how Amsterdam is doing today and how it became that way, how it became this city. And to wrap this up, what I've just been showing you, uh, to become a bike city and to keep it that way, what you need, and this is definitely not the, the total picture, but you, I think these are the main lessons we have learned in Amsterdam. What you need to become a bike city is a societal will to begin with, political will, uh, you need to invest in connected bicycle networks, safe and dedicated infrastructure. You need to reduce the number of cars, invest in parking facilities for bikes. Um, and what also helps very much is having most necessary living facilities like schools, like shops within cycle distance. Uh, of course, the, the um, uh, coming of e-bikes um, makes this uh, a lot easier. Um, and what you have to keep doing is adapt to changing realities, and you also have to keep investing in keeping your city a true bicycling city. Uh, last but not least, I would um, like to all point out uh, our uh, bike uh, community uh, that we as the city of Amsterdam are part of. It's called Amsterdam Bike City. And I would like to um, uh, invite you all to join uh, um, it's, a, it's a forum, it's a, a, a bike society place, it's the place where uh, a platform where we share our knowledge and which we, uh, where we would like to receive your knowledge and your insights. So, last but not least, I think I'm saying this again, but this is the, perhaps the most important thing, is that we, uh, we have a little bridge to the next event. Um, last September, the Dutch uh, Embassy in Seoul office and the Dutch airline, k -Lime, organized an Amsterdam bike tour event together with the Bike Commuting Club, which is the largest Korean bike community I've been told. One winner of this event had the chance to visit Amsterdam to experience the bike facilities and infrastructure and experience the bike city of Amsterdam. So congratulations to Mrs. Hyin Park, I hope I pronounced this right, who we will now share, uh, who will now share with us her experience in Amsterdam for the rest of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed the video and I wish you all can visit Amsterdam after COVID-19. And I also wish you all a very good Congress. 안녕하세요. 한국 네덜란드 수교 60주년 기념으로 주한 네덜란드 대사관과 한국 최대 자전거 커뮤니티 자치사와 함께한 기념 이벤트로 
우수한 자전거 환경을 경험하고자 네덜란드에 방문한 박혜진이라고 합니다. 한국 자전거 라이더들은 네덜란드는 자전거 인프라가 잘 갖춰진 자전거 선진국이라고 부러워하고 있습니다. 한국은 아직 자전거 기반 시설과 운전자, 보행자, 라이더 간의 안전에 대한 배려의식이 부족하고 대부분이 레저 생활에 집중되어 있어 환경과 건강을 지키는 생활형 교통수단으로서는 많이 부족합니다. 저는 네덜란드 방문을 계획하며 확인하고 싶었던 내용을 말하려고 합니다. 첫째, 운전자, 보행자, 라이더의 의식에 대한 부분입니다. 수십 년간 노력한 결과로 보행자와 라이더를 더 우선시하는 모습과 운전자의 양보 운전은 가장 큰 부러움이었습니다. 둘째, 자전거 도로 인프라입니다. 물론 도시는 잘 되어 있을 것이라 생각하고 저는 도시간 이동을 해보았습니다. 몇 번의 유럽 자전거 여행을 경험했지만 네덜란드 투어를 계획할 정도로 잘 구성된 자전거 도로와 쉼터 등으로 안전하고 편안하게 어디든 이동할 수 있다는 것을 확인했습니다. 셋째로 멋진 시민의식과 함께 자전거가 일상생활에서 어떤 모습으로 이용되는지 확인하고 싶었고 저는 실생활에 밀착하여 자전거를 이용하는 데 있어서 안전하고 전혀 불편함이 없는 환경을 확인할 수 있었습니다. 마지막으로 암스테르담 투어를 안내해 주신 PHS 본드의 가이드 분께 이런 환경을 만드는데 얼마나 걸렸는지를 여쭈어 보았습니다. 그분께서는 아직까지도 계속 진행 중이다 라고 말씀하셨습니다. 그러며 한국의 우리 단체는 자전거 환경 개선을 위해 어떤 일을 하고 있느냐고 되물었을 때 저는 자신 있게 어떤 활동을 하는지 말하지 못했습니다. 저는 네덜란드 자전거 환경 개선에 끊임없이 노력하며 현재 상태에 만족하지 않고 계속 진행 중인 모습에 큰 감명을 받았고 한국과 더불어 더 많은 나라에 이런 환경이 만들어지기를 소망하며 이런 멋진 경험과 발표 기회를 주신 모든 분들께 감사드립니다.